chapter 2, verse 24 through 25. This is number four in the new series. There are giants in the land. There are giants in the land. There are giants in the land. But you are an overcomer. Hallelujah. Praise God. Deuteronomy 2, 24 through 25. Rise ye up, take your journey, pass over the river of Arnon. Behold, I have given into thine hand, Sion, the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land. Oh, poor baby. Begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. Which day? This day will I begin to put the dread of thee and the fear of thee upon the nations that are under the whole heaven who shall hear report of thee and shall tremble and be in anguish because of you. Amen. Luke chapter 19, verses 12 and 13. He said, Therefore, a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. And we looked and understood that one of the phraseologies for that would be advance and hold. Advance and hold. Now we left off last time in number three, uh, talking about King Hezekiah. And he was trying to make a deal with the devil, so to speak, and trying to keep peace. And he'd, he'd give offerings, and then the king say, give me more. And he'd go and tear the furniture apart, give me more. Scrape the gold off the door handles, give me more. So he got a little distraught with that. So Hezekiah did something really stupid. You know, when all else fails, go ask God, right? <laughs> And so he said uh, to, uh, to the prophet Isaiah to get a message for the Lord. And the king uh, laid out this petition before the Lord. And that night, that night, he laid out the petition. And that night, the Lord sent a angel to the camp of the Assyrians and took out 185,000 of them. Amen. Praise the Lord. Some of you are so concerned about your neighbor, you won't do anything. Okay. <laughs> so then, if we have a word of the Lord about a situation, we can take that word, lay it before Him, and in faith, believe that He hears. One of the reasons we don't pray like we should is we don't think God listens to us. First John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He does what? He heareth us, heareth, and keeps on hearing. Okay? And if we know that He hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know we have the petitions that we desired of Him. Hallelujah. Well, how can you know He hears us if you ask according to His will? Well, what's His will? I wish I knew. It's in His book. He wrote it down. Praise God. Even though sometimes people don't listen to you, I know that's hard to believe. You may even think like sometimes people completely ignore you. It's probably never happened, right? God says He'll always hear you and He'll always listen to you. If you ask according to His will, which is this, amen, and He'll get it to us, right? The angels are in the mail, folks. I'll tell them. I don't think you heard that. The angels are in the mail. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for not turning off my amen corner, because they're pretty good back there. All right, so now let's get a little deeper into uh, what God's plan for us from the beginning. Did you know God hasn't changed a lick? Okay, if God never changes, then what His will was then is still His will now. That's pretty profound, isn't it? Amen. Genesis chapter 1, verse 20, God said, well, I've read all this before. Well, good, you can read it again. And God said, let the, 
<laughs> it's like somebody, you know, people sometimes say, well, how come you repeat the same scripture over and over? How come you eat breakfast over and over? <laughs> you start treating the Word of God like you treat food, you may really get a hold of something. I've been going for almost seven minutes and haven't hardly meddled at all yet. <laughs> so God said in verse 20 of Genesis 1, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that have life and fowl that may fly above, fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Now jump down to verse 24. And God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature, what? After his kind, cattle, creeping things, and beasts of the earth, after his kind. Say after his kind. And it was so. Okay, law of Genesis, everything reproduces after its own kind. One more time, everything reproduces after its own kind. Okay, so now then, so God planned this stuff, right? It's going to get deep here for you. And, and, and once he planned it, then he spoke. You with me? Whatever it was God spoke, came forth from what he spoke to. When God spoke, whatever God spoke came forth from what he spoke to. It's going to really mean something in a second. That's why I'm going to repeat this a few times. God first decided something, what he wanted to do. Then he spoke what he wanted to be. And it was made from what he spoke to. Once God, you've been repetitious, I know, that's why you're here. Once God decided what he wanted, he spoke to whatever source he wanted to, to come from. So, I'm glad you asked. Genesis 1 26. I read, I just learned the principle. Whatever God wanted to come forth, He spoke to whatever it was He wanted to come forth from. And God said, let us make man in our likeness. When God wanted man, He spoke to Himself. And you came forth. And then He said, in our image, after our likeness, whoo, and let them, mankind, have dominion. Yes. Over what? All that other stuff that's already been made. Yes. Yes. Okay? Fish, fowl, cattle, creeps. What's dominion? Well, that's being in charge, being supreme, uh, power to govern or control. Okay? Verse 28, God blessed them, them who, them mankind, and said unto them, Be fruitful. What's fruitful? Okay, that's to produce, to bring forward, listen, and expose where it can be seen. Expose publicly. Uh, an app, this is kind of silly, but you get the picture. An apple tree doesn't do much when it bears apples if nobody sees it. What good is it? Amen. So, fruitful is to bring forward and expose publicly. Got it? Let's finish uh, Genesis 1, Be fruitful. Multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. Have dominion over fish to sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Anyone having dominion in this earth must follow this godly process in order to function the way God designed it to work. Okay? If you've ever put anything, I remember several years ago, I bought one of our kids, uh, it was a tricycle. I hated that tricycle. <laughs> that thing had more parts in it than my car. 
and I worked on that, and we were still doing the, let's not put any presents out till the next morning trip, right? So I'm in the middle of the night trying to put this stupid tricycle together, <laughs> almost losing my victory over it. <laughs> almost. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. But in order to put the tricycle together, I had to do something really strange. Read the book of instructions. Lo and behold, and wow, so that's what that part, part's for. There, I just put that in there. Look at that. Wow, that's a pretty good deal. Other than sit there and say, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you want to get me a bigger hammer here? No. Now, so if we're going to follow this process then, and the, the Word of God tells us we need to be fruitful, right? So if I'm going to produce something, in, in, in order to profit, I also have to reproduce it. It's not profitable me for it just to sit in a warehouse. It has to be distributed. We're going somewhere with this this morning, and you're going to love me. Remember, uh, if, then, now, if you really want to succeed now, what you need to do is control the marketplace. This may be too deep for some of you, so you either are just too deep for, just close your ears for a while. How do I do that? The way you normally do when I do something that makes you mad. <laughs> Don't shout me down now just because I got preaching. Okay, now, remember, we talked about earlier that God wants us to live inside out minded rather than outside in minded. And that's a tough thing to do, right? So let's go back to, uh, for, for refreshing, John chapter 14, verse 10. Believe it's not thou that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. The words that I speak unto you, that I speak not of myself, but the Father that what? Dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Jesus didn't take credit. He said, why you look at me? Said, I'm kind of big deal. If God didn't send me, he does it. Think about the pressure that you can get off of you when you start realizing that it's God doing it and not you. Amen. 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 Where does the Father dwell? You didn't sound very truthful about that. No. Are you sure? Where does the Father dwell? Amen. Remember, the Holy Ghost has come, right? That's, that's the present truth. The Holy Ghost is in the body of Christ, right? That's the present truth. And He dwells in each and every born-again believer. Verse 12, ver John 14, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on Me, do you believe on Jesus? Yes. The works that I do shall He do also. Who He? He that believes on Jesus. And greater works than these shall He do, because I go to My Father. Amen. Amen. Yes. Verse 14, If you ask anything in My name, I'll do it. Wow. <laughs> Verse 15, if you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. <laughs> I'm not sure they heard that one. <laughs> you know, Jesus said a lot of things are a lot of fun. Here's a fun one. Why do you call me Lord and don't do what I tell you to do? Ouch. Aren't you glad that healing's in the atonement? <laughs> If you love me, keep my commandments, and I'll pray the Father. He shall give you another comforter, that he may, he may abide with you for how long? Forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwells with you, and shall be in you. That's the present truth that Paul was talking about, the present truth, right? Understand that? All right. Where's the Holy Ghost? Is the Holy Ghost God? Yes. Isn't it fun to have theology on Sunday morning? We have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, right? Yes. Now, let's see what He's doing in you. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. <laughs> but if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, is that you? Yes. Okay, is that you over here? Amen. Okay, because I knew there was some over here. I just wanted to be okay. 
He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, old English word, make alive your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwells in you. Look at this in the Amplified. And if, Romans 8, 11, Amplified. And if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then he who raised up Christ Jesus from the dead will also restore life, restore to life your mortal, short-lived, perishable body through, through his spirit who dwells in you. Ah, present truth. It's the Holy Ghost in you. He does the work, which is God. Got it? All right. So where is the spirit? In us, right? Okay. What can the Spirit do? We just read it. He fix anything broken. Restore anything that's broken. Okay? While we're on this earth, we are, as far as God's concerned, self-containers of all that's necessary for us to succeed and prosper in every area of our lives and help others also. You've got deliverance in you. You've got healing in you. You've got peace in you. You've got joy in you. You've got comfort in you through the power of the Holy Spirit that lives within you, praise God. Living from the inside out, becoming God inside minded rather than worldly ruled. We've been so religiously brainwashed instead of what the Scripture says. It's kind of ridiculous. Hallelujah. The third person of the Trinity, the Godhead, the Holy Ghost lives in you. Hallelujah. You get, you get the Holy Ghost and, 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 and He can speak through you. Think about it. Isn't that wonderful? Glory to God. He can answer your questions. But sometimes we don't listen. That's why you got me. <laughs> Holy Ghost can, can, can tell you which way to go. He can bring you joy in the midst of sorrow. He can bring you peace in the middle of trials, tribulations, and anxious moments. We have within us as born-again believers the ability of God to live above the circumstances of this earth. Amen. You are an ambassador for Christ. You are joint heirs with Jesus. You are seated in heavenly places far above all this junk on the earth. And God says we are supposed to be fruitful and produce. Luke chapter 17, verse 20. I'm going to have fun. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he, Jesus, answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo here, lo there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Now, Jesus, of course, was speaking prophetically there because he hadn't been risen from the dead yet. But look at your neighbor and tell you, ask them, did you know you have a production center in you? <laughs> hey, now, now take your finger and point it at yourself and say, I have a production center in me. <laughs> Hallelujah. You've got a production center within you. We just need to get it marketed. Need to get the crop and market the thing. Amen. So what do we do? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's get some raw material. Let's start with there. We got this production center. Let's do something with it. <laughs> Hallelujah. So whatever it is we decide we're going to need to produce in our production center, we can go to the parts warehouse to the supply warehouse and find out what 
whatever it is we need to get into our production center in order to produce whatever it is we need to produce so we can be fruitful and share it with the world and take over the marketplace. Mark 4.14, the sower soweth the word. There is your raw material. That's the raw material you need to put into your factory. <laughs> come on, put it into your factory, and then the little workers come along and take the parts and head for the assembly line. Well, I don't know how that works. I'm glad you asked that question because we can find that out. Isaiah chapter 48, verse 17. Isaiah 48, 17. Are you having fun yet? If you're not, tell yourself, I'm having fun. <laughs> Call those things and be not as though they are if you have to. Come on. Isaiah 48, 17. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord God that Jesus. teaches you to. Right. Notice he didn't teach you to fail. He teaches you to profit, which leads you by the way which you should go. Jesus said, the whole kingdom of God is if a man should cast seed into the ground. The Word of God is seed. There is a seed for every need. Whatever the need, God's got a seed. So, so we take this seed, boy, don't you miss next week. I've already been there, and I know where we're going. I know I'm not going to share it with you this week, maybe. So we take the seed, which is the Word of God, and then we sow it into our production center by speaking it. Once that seed is in the production center, then the, the, <laughs> then the laborers come forth. Amen. And depending on what it is, most of the time it's a planted thing. And they watch over that word. They plant it. Amen. And that seed begins to grow. And as that seed begins to grow, it begins to speak to you by the Spirit of God from the inside out. Everything you need is in the seed. Inside of a, an, an, an apple, you tear an apple apart and it's got little seeds inside. Inside that seed has the ability to reproduce apple tree, which will produce bunches of apples. One apple seed producing one apple tree does not produce one more apple. Amen. Hallelujah. Everything's in the seed. The, 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 the strategy itself is in the seed. The way you're going about things is in the seed. How do you do this? It's in the seed. But it's got to come from the inside out instead of you sitting down and trying to figure it out every which way but loose. And then you come up and say, well, dear Lord, nothing's working. Maybe I'll see what God has to say. <laughs> yes. There are giants in the land, but you have residing on the inside of you the seed that will lead you, guide you, direct you, and help you throw the right stone to overcome the giants. You're going to face giants, but... <laughs> they won't see you as grasshoppers if you don't see you as grasshoppers. But as long as you look at the giant and start seeing yourself as a grasshopper, the giant's going to look at you and say, you're just a grasshopper. Da, 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 da.
If you begin to see yourself as God sees you, then no matter what giants you face, no matter what comes against you, the Word says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. The church has the answer and has always had the answer to the world system. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the answer. And that answer is Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, the Word of God made flesh. That's the answer to the world. Jesus is the answer. Not any answer. He's not even a quick fix. He's a permanent fix. We need to be subduing the earth instead of having the earth just keep on subduing us. You're going to have to work at it. But the good news is it's not as earthly toil. Go to Hebrews chapter 4. Oh, boy, where do we get over there? Okay, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 10. For he that's entered into his rest, he has also what? Cease from his own works. So in order to enter in like God did, God rested on the seventh day, Genesis. God rested on the seventh day. Why? Because he ceased from doing the work. He did the work six days and then rested. Why did he rest on the seventh day? So you could enter into his rest. Why? Because he already did the work for you. You don't have to do that work. God already did it. You just enter into the rest. You don't have to do the work. You just harvest, praise God, and enter into the rest of God. Yes. But if you want to do all the work all over again, God will sit back and let you. Verse 11, let us labor. There is work to do. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. All right, what do you have to do? You're going to have to work. I said, you're going to have to work. Do you know the Bible says someone doesn't eat, doesn't done the work, they don't need to eat? There were people in the early church, hard to believe this, that they'd come to, to, to a Bible study for one purpose and one purpose only, just to get fed. Amen. And then they'd whine and moan and groan about how they didn't have anything. So the Holy Ghost, who's the present truth, said, you don't work, you don't eat. I had a lady several years ago come to me and said, Pastor Dave, you know me, I'm always sweet and beat around the bush on things. And she said, my husband won't go to work. I said, don't feed him. Right. <laughs> well, I can't do that. Well, then don't come ask me about it then. I just gave you the answer. Why do you call me pastor and don't do what I say? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to have to go to work. And I got some news for you. Contrary to what you may be hearing through the media, God is not in the business of socialism. God is not in the business of welfare. He'll use welfare so that you can fare well. You're just getting too popular. You know that? Okay. <laughs> just like a woman has to go into labor to bring something new, we're going to have to labor to enter into his rest. And the big thing you're going to have to labor with is shutting this thing down. Getting this under control. Not sweating, not toiling, but laboring in the Word of God. There's many of you sitting here today that still don't read our, our blog every day. Boy, now it's getting quiet in here, isn't it? <laughs> well, I would, Pastor Dave, but I'm too busy on Facebook. Never mind. <laughs> then when you need help, call on Facebook. I'm sure they'll help you. <laughs> Here's what you need to do with Facebook. <laughs> Slap it right in the face yeah. most of the time. Oh, I'm getting fun this morning. Praise God. I am getting so many bounce backs. It's exciting. Praise God. Hallelujah. My metal machine is breaking up to number 10 this morning. 
Hallelujah. Not sweating, but, but laboring in the Word of God. When you go to the Word of God, you find out what you need to produce, and you begin to meditate on it and, and begin to, to act like it's so, and it begins to come alive in you. In Joshua 1, 3, God told Joshua, He said, Every place the sole of your foot shall tread. I've given it to you, as I said to Moses. A lot of times in the world system that we live in today, you will be faced in positions whereby your particular job, whatever it may be, is surrounded by a bunch of unbelief. Oh, really? <laughs> Amen. Think about this for a minute. You're in a particular job position that if you truly believe God put you there, eventually, eventually, as you do things according to the Word of God, you're going to be looked upon as being valuable to that company. And then you start getting raises where nobody else gets raises. You start getting promotions where people that have been there forever don't get that promotions. You may get yourself in a position to the point that someday you may just end up owning the company. Here we go. Hallelujah. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22 through 23. And after we get done here, you're going to say, praise God, I'm glad he's on his first clothes. <laughs> the nice thing about being a preacher, I change my clothes every week. Verse 22, Proverbs 13. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children, children, and the wealth of, the, isn't this wonderful? We love this scripture. The wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, you may have to go work for the sinner just to get his money. I may have to go down to First Church and preach this because they'd really get into this. Verse 23, we know about verse 22, but if we looked at verse 23, watch this. Much food is in the tillage of the poor, but there is that is destroyed for want of judgment. I got some news for you. Check me out. It says, much food is in the tillage of the poor. There aren't shortages on this planet. It's just in the wrong hands. Did you know the reason more people aren't wealthy or the reason people are still poor? Because it isn't the fact that there's not an abundance of stuff on the planet. It's the absence of self-production. Stick with me here. It's the absence of self-production. Each one of us have different giftings. Each one of us can do things that I can't do, for instance. The problem is you need to be producing what you have. When you don't produce anything, you end up in the blame game. Come on. We need to quit blaming the man. And be good looking at the man, Jesus, and his name, his word is inside of you. There's a fellow that uh, was amazing. His name is George Washington Carver. Maybe you learned about him in the school. And, and he was really dedicated to God. And he asked the Lord, What do I do with this peanut? He'd get along with God. And as I understand the story, what he'd do was, he'd, 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 he'd say, I got to hear from God. And he'd go into his laboratory, close the sheets, close himself up in there, and said, leave me alone, don't disturb me, till I hear from God. And he'd just hang out in his laboratory to hear from God. God showed him something like 300 products that could be made from peanuts. I can think of one, peanut butter. <laughs> Which is funny, he didn't do peanut butter. Someone else did peanut butter, isn't that funny? But he, he discovered that he could make 
go all the way to, from, from, from face cream to children's crayons, over 300 items. Has got about milkweed. He got 115, over 115 inches out of milkweed for crying out loud because he just went and hung out with God. But we're too busy to just sit and listen. Remember Peter uh, wasn't catching anything? Fish all night, didn't catch a thing. Well, Jesus said, can I use your boat? Peter said, yeah, sure, go ahead. Peter you know, used his boat, did some preaching. Then he tells Peter what to do. He said, go ahead, throw your net out there, pull up a load. Peter said, ah, wait a minute. I've been fishing all night. I'm a fisherman. You're a preacher. You don't know nothing. <laughs> you don't know anything about life. You're just a preacher. I know all there is to know about fishing. That's why they make Safeway. <laughs> so Peter, now watch this, he caught so many fish that his boat began to sink. Watch this. He called for help. Other fishermen came. Their boats, their boats began to sink. Right? Peter, one man, Peter, who couldn't catch anything, obeyed the word, and he converted the entire economy of Capernaum. Wherever God has placed you, wherever you are at this moment, you can get some inside information of the marketplace of the field that you're in. Amen. We've given our education system over to the kingdom of darkness. Amen. Our little children are being taught things that are so contrary to the Word of God that not many years ago we wouldn't even be talking about it. Amen. They've taken a truth and gone so far with it it's become ridiculous. We're starting to reward lawlessness because they have an excuse. When I was in uh, law enforcement, every person I arrested always had some reason why they did what they did. A lot of times it was, it wasn't fair they had three TVs, I didn't have one, so I went and got one of theirs. That was a mindset. It wasn't fair. And we get upset at the government, we get upset at the media, we get upset at all this stuff, you know, but, you know, but yet we don't show up for chair, prayer, but I won't serve that right now. But if you want to get upset at somebody, let's do it this way. Let's get upset at us, the body of Christ. The body of Christ is not operating and functioning in the rightful position in this earth. We've sat back and on the interest of being stupid, not spiritual, but stupid and intellectual, we've allowed the world to rule and reign in our place. And that was not God's plan. We have been called to rule and reign as kings and priests unto God. There was a time, even in my lifetime, I remember this, when those in government positions would ask the church for advice about what to do about certain things. Amen. We need to get back ruling and reigning. Amen. I took Bible out of school. The church sat back and said, well, you know, it's okay. It's church, you know, it's Took prayer out of school. You know, they can never take prayer out of school as long as they have finals. <laughs> the church needs to go back to being the church. We need to be, quit bearing our fruit in here, but bear it out there so the world can see that there's a 
God in the church. God has a seed for every need, and we have the answer for every need. His name is Jesus, the Word of the living God. Hallelujah. And I'm Pastor Dave, and I approve of this message. Let's <laughs> stand your feet and praise God. Hallelujah.